Oh, all right. Um, like to call the planning commission meeting for Monday, August 14, 2023, at 6 p.m. to order. Um, roll call and declaration of the forum. Sorry. Here. Present. Present. Here. Parent. Here. Hoffman. Here. Joe Jordan is excused. Lumber. Here. All right. Um, public comments. Is there anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a public comment on something being discussed tonight? Second time, anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment? And the third time, anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment? Hearing none, none, none. Move on to uh, item number three, minutes from previous meetings. We have the minutes from the July 10th, 2023 Joint PC and EPD meeting. Motion by Durham. Second. Second by Deason. On the question, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Communications, disclosures, and recusals. Members of the body should make any required disclosures or recusals during this time. Do we have any? Okay. Um, item four, written communications received. Nothing. Okay. All right, uh, moving on down the list, we're gonna to go to public hearings. Um, if the rest of the PC is okay with it, I do have a request to move item number seven for Dustin Breland up to the front line and see how that would be to get to it seven. Is everybody okay with that? Five, four, and one against. All right. Even noted. Well, we'll jump ahead to item number seven then, project number 2023. 0188 Dustin Breland on behalf of owners Clarence and Suzanne Kurzmeyer on Weston Minimax Storage, requesting a conditional use permit to allow for construction of a personal storage facility, section 94.4.06, parent three, on a 4.96 acre property located at 8211 Schofield Avenue, pin number 192 2808 231 0955. I'll open the public hearing. Any presentation by applicant and or staff. Yeah, so this uh, is there was two parts of that one that was just going to combine that to uh, a couple months ago. Yeah, they're looking at doing storage units. Uh, all plans have been submitted to date. Uh, there's really nothing. No waivers that are needed, everything is pretty straightforward with this one. Um, or just being a personal store facility needs a personal use. <coughs> yeah, Dustin this year, if you have any questions for him. The only thing missing was the NOI concerning that so yeah. it was built so it's just for the building. Okay. Anything else you said? Okay. Uh, Dustin, are you, are you here? Or do you have anything you'd like to add, sir? No, I'm just here for any questions that you guys have for me. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, Okay, public comment period. Is there anybody online in the audience that wishes to make a comment on this particular item? Second time, anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment? And the third time, any comments on this matter? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, recommendation from staff. Staff recommended approval. Okay. And that's the only thing we're short of. Right. So open it up for discussion and action by the planning commission. Um lighting plan is good. Mm -hmm. Karen. Um that is the Roman or Travis, lighting plan is good? Yeah. Cool. 
Uh, security cameras, are still going to have any closures or get away from that? Is it mandated in the? Let's say it a different way. You guys have security cameras. You want security cameras? Yeah, I'm planning on doing security cameras that day. So that was easy. Uh, fencing. The yard is all fenced. 360. I don't know the whole yard. Definitely by not by the up front. Yeah. Um, what did what did we say about that? What's the thing? Is that, I thought the last one had me fenced 360. Well, that's because it was about it residential zone. Um, so, but against if it's business, if it's against business park and other LI property, it does not need any fencing. Correct, it doesn't need a buffer yard. I don't mean a buffer yard, I mean for security. No, there would be any listed performance standards, and there's nothing in that that says defense is required for security. Does it have to be screened on the front on the roadside? You have to be 25 foot buffer with safety. I think some facilities do fencing all around and that and that's how they control whether or not you know if, if someone doesn't pay it, you don't get the call. Yeah, I'm just asking if we have a right. I don't know. I, I totally know understand the respect both sides of it. If I want to pay for fence or don't, or if I want to have a secured site or I don't. Uh, but does our zoning code mandate one or one way or the other? Well, we just went through this two months ago with Brian Shane Rental. We had a response and had a screen on the street side in a hot situation. I have no preference. If you guys are good with no fence, I'm good with that. I mean, your customers may want a fence or a gate, or you might want to keep somebody out of there. I, I respect that. But that's a new year. You know how to run a business. I don't know how to run a store business. Um, what about restriction on what can be stored there? Is there any restriction that we have on that, Jennifer? They have to use it for storage. There are no outside storage materials shall be permitted at site with the exception of an outdoor trash or recycling receptacle. If proposed, and approved as part of the site planning and spring in accordance with section 94406. I believe on this one, which I pass to have one. Most don't because usually I'm like just like kind of dumping site for anyone else. Okay. Um, what about the uh, sort of train plans or automobiles? And for the barrel tag, and for the trailer yes. tag, and for the boat, and for the camper, and for yeah. the clear jet. That's the outside storage, so they have to use for inside storage. So it has to be a hanger for the plane. Well, they do have massive storage, so I suppose they could fit something in there. Well, I'm asking. <laughs> Maybe I want to park my plane there. If it's inside, <laughs> if this facility shall be limited to the indoor storage of household items. Similar durable goods, no live animals, perishable items, odor producing materials, flammable or explosive materials, toxic or non noxious materials, or hazardous materials shall be stored on site. You know, storage units may have any other function aside from storage, including but not limited to retail, full scale workshop, hobby shop, manufacturing, residential, lodging, or service. So, no fully assembled chickens, no airplanes outside. <laughs> No Where is this property exactly located? Mm -hmm. it's it's the 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 right next to the next door. Is it to the east? Yeah. 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 Okay. So so I'm so assuming so that's where there's more fencing on it. Yeah. So the planning commission. May require that the county be equipped with a digital security camera that is for the site of community coverage. I'm assuming you'll have that on because you don't have the you don't have the fence off. So you you well, have gates. We're we're getting we're not concerned about blocking that channels between the overall and the community and stuff. So. I mean, you do have the <clears throat> you have you do have the bar right next door, right? Yeah. That's fair. Um, <laughs> well, it's room, right? so two o'clock, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a padlock, you know. But, yeah. Well, my plane's going to be inside. My hotel. Room. <laughs> so, the event on the front off right and thus each storage unit shall be outfitted with quality commercial locks, and the plane commission may require daily access to the facility and other such events. So, that's what. 
I imagine that's what happened with the one down on by me because it was gated all the way. The Ryan Street one is the first one. Yeah, one well, rather than jump, but the one, the one on service line is that. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that was under a different code. Yeah. That yeah, that's why I was asking about that. Yeah. I see the snow storage. I understand the snow storage. I think they, they had to put a gate in the back to push the snow on past it. But some of, the, some of your other properties that you guys currently have. Yeah. With in other areas, what's recommended, what's required for fencing or security reasons? Uh, I mean, generally speaking, in our area, there's no requirement for it, but we, we do the gates because it ties into our software. So, like, if someone doesn't pay, it locks the FOB doesn't work, they can go online and pay it while they park there, and the FOB works. Um, so, we found that to be very effective as opposed to like. Physically locking people out of their units every week, we can prevent them from being able to drive in and get their stuff. Um, and so that's, yeah, it's been really effective. But we have done like, um, you know, like screen fencing, like a, like a, you know, a wall of arbor bias or something like that to prevent someone from wanting to drive through the ditch. But we've never actually had that happen. So, um, I know like WASA had us do that, for example, on our site. Uh, we had to, it could be a fence or it could be plants. They didn't want them to be able to go through the ditch. That was the, the narrative, which, I mean, that's fine. We haven't ever had that issue, but. <clears throat> What's your pleasure? Good to go through the, the floor. Oh, yeah. The floor. <laughs> Who just like to talk about? We can take turns. You're such a good reader. Are you ready? Is the proposed initial use consistent with the comprehensive plan in this chapter and all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village? Yeah, that's yes. 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 The proposed conditional use in its proposed location and as depicted on the required site plan will not result in a substantial or undue adverse impact on nearby property, the character of the neighborhood, environmental factors, traffic factors, parking, public improvements, public property or rights of way, or other matters affecting the public health, safety, or general welfare, either as they now exist or as they may in the future be developed as a result of the implementation of the provisions of this chapter, the comprehensive plan, or all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village. Yes, yes. yes. Does the proposed conditional use maintain the desired consistency of land uses, land use intensity, and land use impacts as related to the end around and subject property? Yes, yes. yes. Is the proposed conditional use located in an area that will be adequately served by and will not impose an undue burden on any of the improvements, facilities, utilities, or services provided by public agencies serving the subject property? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Do the potential public benefits of the proposed conditional use outweigh potential adverse impacts? Of the proposed condition use after taking into consideration the applicant's proposal and any requirements recommended by the applicant to ameliorate such impacts. Yes. yes. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Gurney, second by Pencil. Did you do it? Um, on the question, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So period. Thank, Thank you, John. John. Yes, Thank you much. So back to item number six, topic number 20230083. Corey Schlosser, on behalf of the owner of Stainless Holdings LLC, requesting a conditional use permit to allow for the construction of a personal storage facility, section 94.4.06, parent three on 6.39 acre property located at 4305 Transport Way. 
PIN number 192-2808-282-0007. I'll open the public hearing. And presentation by applicant and their staff. Uh, so this one first came us back in uh, March, I believe. So it's quite some time when it first came up. We didn't have complete plans, and uh, they were pending a updated one of elimination because the previous one was done that and so over five years old for him to be done. Um, that has now been done. Um, the analyzer is taking care of at this point. Again, pretty straightforward for the most part. All the plans have been submitted. Um, this one will require a waiver, however. Um, one of the performance standards states that a buffer yard needs to be required um, along any residentially zoned properties and against public right away. <laughs> Uh, and that buffer yard is like a 25 feet when it runs there. Um, their buffer yard is ranges from like 12 to 16, so it's under that 25 feet. It does say under the landscape standards that the site plan approval authority can reduce or approve a reduction in said buffer yard. Um, so they are requesting that uh, the plans are approved at the full and they don't have to extend that buffer yard to 25 feet. Um, Corey is here for any questions for him. He did have a couple of pictures that I threw in that he wanted to show him a reference to the other bumper yards that are on transfer way there. Um, you know, like I said, Corey is here if you have any questions. And... Oh, Mr. Co Corey's not here. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. I'm not over of state was holding Corey was unable to make it. Oh, so. okay. I'm going to answer, hopefully, be able to answer all of your questions. You say your name and address for the record, please. Yes, Josh Winsman for the I E S M A N. Uh, my residence is 109 Aspen Hill Lane in Wausau, 5003. Thank you. That opens up. Do you have anything like that right away, sir? No, just I'll answer whatever questions I can. Okay. Um, public comment period. Is there anybody online in the, in the audience that wishes to make a comment on this matter? Second time, anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment? Hey, John, I got a question on the road side of these things. Do they have to meet the same um, percentage of you know facade as other commercial buildings? You yeah. mean like landscaping? Uh, no. Oh, like like brick, it's the brick and natural, natural, natural material. Natural yeah. 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 So we're down at the uh, side of those corners, the left side. Well, they have the ends of the other building. Yeah. Right. The end of the building. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a stand for the side of that, too, right? 60%. I mean, inside the back or what that's like, yeah, I don't know, 15 or that. or something. I, don't know that. I, I wouldn't advocate for changing the side of the back and the side is all doors, and mine's like one foot strip in between them. Do you currently have any photos of or what your plan is for the ends of the buildings? Um, I believe Corey did yeah. attach some of your photos, which is yeah. elevations. No, I don't think it's showing all steel. I don't have any key materials at the silver. It should have, yeah, it should have something on at least the two side portions of it. Yeah, can you put in the commission on this? It's a single form steel, right? On school for layout. I don't think we saw. I mean, there was elevation down there, but it wasn't labeled steel. Is it labeled steel as well? Steel with a copper trim. Well, that's a planning thing, right? I mean, as far as planning, you guys uh, decided to send a why you want to make sure that they meet the requirements of that. Well, it should have been caught. So if you were going to put that in, they should have caught that for the review. Who's that? 
Well, so either building or anyway, I did not look at this, but that's that. So, but that can be, can that be brought to their attention? Yes, this one, if we want to go back and, and make it be changed to a motion, I mean, we're not here, but we can talk to them. This one, we can. Yes. That school for that would have to have. Yeah. School for that one has to have more than this one does. School for that one should have had. Um, they're specific. But you can't issue a permit without having them inspect anyways, right? Well, it should have got caught at site, though. That's where. But then, so uh, like here right. we are, we approve the condition on use, yeah. but even though we approve the condition on use with whatever we put on there, it still has to meet. You can still yes. have that conversation. Yes. And if they have objections to it, they can come back next month, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we don't no, necessarily need to change anything with our motion. I don't think. Yeah. No, because it, it, it yeah. wouldn't be like a word of and everything that we had approval besides right. the NOI. Right. Which. Oh, well, we would we would be making a phone call for them tomorrow, right? Okay. Somebody okay. should be uh, to let to let them know that. Yes. Oh, by the way. Okay. I I think we should. But to save on the night weekend, that's let's talk about this one tonight. What are we expecting? What are we, yeah. Do you have a best standard on that, Aaron? Okay, hold that thought. Let me let me finish up public comment and get the hearing closed, and then we can where this It's okay. Um, third time. Anybody online in the audience that wishes to make a comment? All right, hearing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. Okay. So uh, now discussion. Okay. So this one is considered industrial construction. So the site plan approval authority may reduce the requirement to zero so long as the property is not above the scope of value of the SF0 plus the document. Ross Avenue and Orange State Highway 25. So this value is really high. So I guess I would suggest it. Otherwise, it's 35. Yeah, 35%. Yeah. yeah. Just on the street page, right? So sometimes what they'll do is they'll use this real quick, like uh, almost like a what's the proper word for it? Uh, no, like a almost uh, like a split base block, but it's a spin split base, and they'll put that on the first That's X amount of pieces. Kind of more than the cost that they that. That's yeah, like the split base on that one right yeah. there. That's so a split that base block, but that's a full time, block. That was what was required. So, yeah. So a lot of them would like that. But you're saying you just a panel that's 35% of the height, or 35% of the street distance for a quarter. Yeah, we, we can make block. that determination. It's either that or else. Are you color coordinating, coordinating these buildings in any two tone or? Steel. So if you could, you know, I think it's up to us. We could determine if we wanted to have red on the bottom or something like that. The first 30, you know, whatever, 50, 50 or however, or else we would require it to, to meet the, some natural material, at least 35%. I think it's go to 11%. Well, maybe not turn it off. It depends on Commercials for you. So it just depends on what it's saying. Well, what is that? So this one is this one. So, so this one falls under the industrial construction. So it can be zero. You may see that change as long as it's not on school for that. Or highway from Yep. Or west. Or west. Or west. So any of the major thoroughfares. Zero. I think all of the other buildings have something. Yeah. Right? I mean, Bruce has got some, and Overtour Park has some, Don has some. Even though. Yeah, that was the old one. This one was on the old one. Yeah, those ones built that one. Yeah. Yeah. That could impact you. Yeah, you're good. Perfect. What about fencing and cameras and that outfit? Uh, we do have cameras um, and also either a front fence and gate. Um, 
Is that property? Is that property abutting Yeager's property then? So the back side. Yeah, it's a point of the south quite a Yeah, there's a significant amount of which we should have done itself. Um, mm -hmm. What's your foot? What's your foot now? So we improve this center and just have staff working with, with the applicant as far as yep. whatever is what fair to both of you for the 35% or whatever that number is. You want to go with the 35%? Is that what the number was for our line? Okay. Don't need on the back side of the sides of the doors, but just the. That is minimum, correct? Like, do you want to do 50 or. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. There's no way to go more. Yeah. And then I'm happy to break your stone. It can be any of the less improved. We even do like a horizontal metal paneling or. Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, glass is one of those elements. Yeah. So if there's a glass door that. Up on the panels. I mean, all of that, that looks out. I mean, I thought you were having more doors on the oh, door yeah. side for windows or glass. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're okay with uh, less than 25 feet for the. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I just was asking if it's this parking, I guess. Um, right. Everything is in, inside and outside, everything out there. Correct. That's so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. Is the proposed commissional use consistent with the comprehensive plan, this chapter, and all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is the proposed commissional use in its proposed location and as depicted on the required site plan? Will not result in a substantial or undue adverse impact on nearby property, the character of the neighborhood, environmental factors, traffic factors, parking, public improvements, public property or rights of way, or other matters affecting the public health, safety, or general welfare, either as they now exist or as they may in the future be developed as a result of the implementation of the provisions of this chapter, the comp plan, or all other plans, programs, and ordinances adopted by the village. Yes. 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 Does the proposed commissional use maintain the desired consistency of land uses, land use intensities, and land use impacts as related to the end rounds of the subject body? Yes. 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 Is the proposed commissional use located in an area that will adequately be served by and will not impose an undue burden on any of the improvements, facilities, utilities, or services provided by public agencies serving the subject property? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Do the potential public benefits of the proposed conditional use outweigh potential adverse impacts? Of the proposed conditional use after taking into consideration the applicant's proposal and any requirements recommended by the applicant to ameliorate such impacts. Yes, yes, yes. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Deason, second by Lumper. On the question. This is with the reduced buffer yard zone. Correct. Staff working with the applicant to meet the uh, or, uh, Architectural elevated materials on the north facing side of the buildings. Building is all that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so we want to clarify just real quickly if you're looking at the site plan, um, we radius the three foot radius on that uh, building facing Nova on that 45 degree angle. That, that doesn't have to be required up there, does it? Um, the 76.6. Right here, sorry. No. Right here. That doesn't have to meet the requirement, correct? 
And I don't think that's the, the, the yeah. building to the right. Yeah, that one too. That, so, that's the building. Yeah, okay. Right, right. This thing. But the 45 degree angle oh. and the building to the right of that. So is that considered a front? The 45 feet. Is that two separate buildings? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, but is that considered a front? Because you can't really see it from that. Look at the landscape. I don't think you can. You You're only going to see that 30 foot mm -hmm. right in front of the door. Right. Yeah, and then the, then you've got the other one there, you know, well, that's so far back. Through, so yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. I mean, you would only see that. This, as far as cost impact, I was just trying to clarify it so you have a direction that you don't have to be doing on all the old buildings, probably just the three, the fourth one in the front, just the front side. So the three larger ones and the one smaller one. Just that 20 foot or however long that. Yeah, that is. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. Do we need to modify the motion? I think I'm just question. I don't think we have to modify it. I think yeah, that's, we, we okay. can. Clear I think staff's sure. got the where for all to work through that. Okay. I'm going to go to the test for you. <laughs> okay. Any further on the discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're back to number five now, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, item number five, project number. Two zero two three zero two zero one village of Western investment and rezone from MH manufactured home zoning district to B2 highway business zoning district on a 3.8890 acre property located at 1919 Schofield Avenue Westland. The property being rezoned is currently vacant land that used to be known as the Alpine Mobile Home Park. Pin number 192-2808-184-0998. I'll open the public hearing. All right, they have been marketing this before as commercial property since Alpine uh, basically removed the trailers and it was purchased by Ted uh, yes. Casey. Um, he lives in Florida. Uh, he is actually actively marketing it to sell. We've got a few people looking at it, um, and it really shouldn't be as manufactured plate anymore. Uh, the zoning are the comprehensive plan and the uh, quarter plan that's the same that's going to go through the purchase can be commercial. So I am bringing this forward at this time to turn it into um, B2 um, just so that one we don't have to have, you know, we don't get a mobile home park here <laughs> because that is a really <laughs> um, and that uh, it will be easier for sales. Um, one of the people that is looking at it, um, it probably would have to be a planning development because it's a little bit more than the mixed use that they're looking at. Um, it has a little bit more residential in it, but um, we've not received anything concrete. So, right now, the best use of that would be for B2, like the rest of the. And if it is changed to do again, what happens if they want to put mixed use? If mixed there? use is allowed, um, under B2, in B2, like a mixed use, like that we were proposing, where you've got commercial and yeah. residential, it's when the one that we got approached with would have a couple different uses on site, so it may have two houses, it could have um, four houses, it could have an apartment building, it could have. Um, an apartment with a restaurant, that kind of thing. So there, so we're seeing a couple different things, and that was a really big comp for a plan development because oh, like, okay. the, yeah, the yeah. apartment in the multi family is not allowed in any of the um, anything but the one. We don't have any the long term. So, okay. 
So this is it's really this this would be the first move for them to go to a new zone and they'll come in and supply the development. Because they have to have concrete plans for you, so they could go that way. They they're not really sure exactly what they want. There's got a few people looking at it too. So and are they doing this to change the zoning right now? Just no, I'm doing it because it's been manufactured home for a while. Okay, so yeah. you're doing this change the zoning. Uh, yes, it's not the really work. Changing it. It should have been done a long time ago. Okay. When we use this dog. They're okay with changing this to be good. I didn't hear anything from anybody. The realtor called and just asked to make sure it was still commercial and then allow for an excuse and I explained that it worked. But the owner, can you talk to the owner as well? He I haven't talked to him for a while. He's been marketing it. We actually marketed this stuff in 2018 um for him as commercial there was like a request for proposals but then nothing really resulted from it so his goal was not to was never to use it as a he cleaned it up and yeah. was going to sell it sure but to clarify off what there is said you have talked to him and he is okay with you i haven't him? he got the notification and he did not respond so he would have responded if he did not want to do that I think he's been working as commercial. It's been commercial it's for a couple of times, so it kind of holds up the process if somebody wants to cook the pie, then he's got to come to pass for warning request. Yeah, before, so before right that. now if similar if, to what Carl this, then it's set for somebody. And if they want to do more than that, then they'll have to come make sure that yeah, they can do a plan development plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that requires them to have a specific plan for you. Um and that would have a hearing and everything with it. This would allow it to be um, is that house that's right next to Woodley there? Is that part of this too or no? No, that's already zoned actually. So that was zoned due to a long time ago. So that's an actual non conforming use. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't think anybody's ever talked about it, but that may be something that um, maybe the village approaches that homeowner. I know that it's going some deals recently <laughs> that that one so mm -hmm. um, that would be a good use of tech money they couldn't play from there for a long time yeah, yeah and he was at my past oh he did so yeah he was in an accident mm -hmm. oh yeah so the sun is still there correct mm -hmm. yeah. so you can't really unless you unless it says vacant for a while you can't really get in the middle can you talk about a house yeah we're going to actively pursue buying this thing. We don't have a real great history of a positive equity real estate transaction, so I'm kind of against that. Also, good for a third party. We think it's something that could be looked at, though. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if it's wrapped some deals already. We were told at that point. Yeah, which is that the prop is that the property to the six eighteen or seven or eighteen point six? Whatever the time you want. It's one eighteen point six. It's one eighteen point six. Nineteen twenty five. Oh, my bad. Sorry, you are correct. I don't okay. know at one time they did move on it to purchase. Oh, I'm sure they did. Okay. Um, public comment. Anybody online or in the audience that wishes to make a comment on this? Yeah. Um, can, you, can you state your name and address for the record, please, sir? Yes. I'm Russ Forbes. Uh, I live at 5417 Pine Park Street. One of the adjoining properties on this uh, uh, property that you're talking about. Um, and maybe making it all be due is fine. It makes sense. Uh, but given the discussion about fencing and whatnot between business areas and residential areas, is that part of the B2 plan that uh, if that somebody does come in, that there is some way to uh, restrict access to public properties along the way? There's buffer yard requirements, yes. It, but it comes at the time of site zone. So, this, so that would include something fencing yeah, that anything true. that anything that was up against so the yellow yeah properties um the the both at the local level so depending on what was proposed um there's, I don't think there's there, buffer yeah, yeah there's no requirement for, for it can be landscaping or fencing. Or kind of be true, true. Yeah. yeah 
I mean, just one thing that having had that uh, mobile home park there was always a problem for us because people would just take and dump trash across in our woods. And so for us to clean it up, it's probably a real pain. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see the mobile home go away. Uh, but I really would rather not have to deal with trash pickup from other people just helping shelter and moving stuff. Uh, and I just bring it up, I, you know, it, it's just a, a, a homeowner in that area that, that that's a concern. That maybe the be too, you know, when you get down to the final detail with whoever's going in there, that, that might be something that they should put in their plan, whatever, whatever it is. So you can you would have to notice it that if anyone was going to develop on that, correct? If so we have a chance to appear. So if, if somebody does go through the 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 plan development or requires a conditional use, then they get notified. If it's just a site plan or a permitted use, it just has to meet site plan requirements. And so it would be a buffer yard of some kind. So the buffer yard requirement jumps on that. Is that what is that buffer yard requirement? I know it's 25. 25. So the buffer yard to what asphalt? Or building setback, or when you say buffer yard, I'm confused with buffer yard versus a, a say a picketing fence or a fence with with it's a. It's part of a development. You know, we should put a fence or a line. So minor body of the institutional, the west, I think that in strip of potential ancient burial ground. Um, so about the institutional, there was no property yard requirement. <clears throat> yeah, so it's usually a fence residential. There's a minimum length of 25 feet unless it's reduced by the site plan approval authority. If it determines that a lesser width is adequate to separate incompatible uses and activities, or if necessary, only to say to strings beyond the patrol of the owner. So, what's, when you say 25 feet, is that from the building, from the blacktop? It's from just 25 feet in. So, it's basically the off. 25 or like okay. landscaping off of his lot line. Would be off the lot line in. So, so no asphalt, no building. There's nothing in there except for green space and. Space. But your building could be 25 feet. Well, they, it could be in a little bit. No, I thought if you if you do put a fence. Well, that's where the site plan approval oh, authority can okay, lessen they, it. They can lessen it to so 10 the feet, past, but then the fence would have to be yeah, placed. Yeah. So there. in the past, on some of that, <laughs> if they put up a full fence, then they've been given a yeah. basically reduction in that 25. So when we when 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 we said when he goes home tonight, I want him to have a good feel of if he thinks there's going to be a fence there because he, when you said when you said a buffer yard, buffer yard means 25 feet. They may not require a fence there, but they would require a landscape. So it's yes. a landscape so, area for fence and or wall that results in a reduction of visual and other interaction with the adjoining property. But if they want to go from 25 feet to 24 feet or 10 feet, or 10 feet, it would he would have to be notified or have to come back here. Well, the site plan approval authority has to do it, which doesn't mean he's getting notified. If it came here, that would be something that we would find development. You guys. That would be fine development or a condition. Yeah, but if it comes to that, typically we will bring it here and then we don't do the site plan stuff. So okay. they would come here. Just trying to think of what we did on the old. I think we got the attic in order to fit them in there. I believe we used some of that landscape in the buffer and we're able to get the building to go closer. We went 15 instead of 25. I just can't remember. I'm just I'm just trying to put myself in this position of of its concern is if it has to be. Yeah, what's being like somewhat proposed there right now would require a plan development, which would require the plan. To come here and, 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 have he, here. and he would be notified okay. because plan development and or conditional use then the neighbors. Yeah, the plan and most likely this. I mean, what's 
then getting proposed is going to trigger that plan development. And that means it would come to you, there would be a notification. Okay. So if somebody were to just, just give this example, put some apartments in there and they have three, two offices on the apartment building complex. Yeah, that, well, it's the apartments that can trigger the plan development because that's not an allowed use of the two. Okay. So if they want to do well, any is type the, of residential. Is it mixed use? The mixed use is okay. The but mixed use, use can be apartment building and, and a commercial service. Right, it could be, yeah. So is that? that that's that, not going to trigger the plan It depends if it's in the same building or not. Yeah, it's mixed use. You have to have one building with both combined. Right. Right? You have to have the. You have to have retail on the main floor. Yeah. Retail, or it can be office, in office. Retail, so if every building I wanted to put on that this property line had two offices and apartment building. If it was mixed use, no, you're right. Then, yeah. then so the apartment building with mixed use in it could be legal right next to him, and and he could he wouldn't get notified. Does that answer your question? It does. I, it's confusing. Because we're confused sometimes. Something happening on my yard, it would be mm -hmm. nice to know. Well, you can always on. sign up for all of the same question agendas, too. That's going to be an email on Or you can get on Valerie's list and she emailed that we can use on that list, too. Okay, I mean, because obviously my concern is only things that are affecting my property. I'm not really concerned about, yeah. you know, what's I mean, if it happens you know, within the uh, next year, I could probably remember to send it to you. If it happens like two years from now, I might not remember. I understand that. I believe Keith, uh, there were some conversations of most of the most developers want to be able to have a secondary exit when they're coming in there. And that was, was this conversation I had with him and his neighbor, and I can't wait at 50, 403. Oh, we're gonna look around and talk about that's the one on the political cost of village property move. The bill all went powers. All the wrong side. But we want to be a direct route. So that's a I have to be <coughs> negotiated, I suppose, an emergency exit or something. Or that um you uh, could you could maybe go to the east too with a little bit of uh land acquisition. That's all those gigantic pine trees there behind that uh, ceramic place. Yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, sure to, to, the, to the east. Oh, oh, you're saying to the east. Uh -huh. To go to Cherry Street? Well, there's undeveloped property back there. You, you'd have to cross Wiggly's though. Yeah. No, uh, but, but the end of, well, yeah. Yeah, you would. Because, yeah, that top yellow one is heading to the gate. Yeah. Like, uh, the the no, I don't think so either. I'll be happy to sign right. the uh, can, can, can I just summarize real quickly just so I know this and, and just for your benefit also? So, if someone puts in something that's legal conforming and it's the closest they can get to his lot line, is 25 feet and they still have to put up a buffer and in that situation they would he would not necessarily be noticed right unless you happen to catch it if someone wants to develop anything closer than 25 feet to your lot line you will be noticed okay and have a chance to to come forward and get exact understanding of what's going to happen okay. and it would likely be a fence in that situation something of that nature Right. Okay. Okay. Does right. that That's clarify right. for you? Okay. And there's nothing preventing him from putting a fence on his yard. Right. Yeah. So if you really don't want whatever is blowing across the street from uh, where Trailer Park used to live into your yard, well, I mean, yeah, it's 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 amazing amazing how much set up for crap people can read. Oh, you know, yeah. They so don't want to be responsible for understand. it. We understand that. Yeah. And, and Jen, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, to your point, uh, that backyard, the backyard of the say apartment complex, your screen door or your backyard could be with a 25, 25 foot buffer. That could be the start of the building as well, right? Right. Yeah, most likely it's going to be the backyard. Yeah. Okay. And to build anything, I'll just be honest with you, to build anything nowadays, it's not going to be a little, not, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but it's not going to be a whole rent 
yeah. situation. It's so expensive to build, you have to get high res. So you have a different caliber of clientele than a trailer park. So, well, I guess I was just going to get back to the original reason for proposing this rezoning. And if someone were to propose putting a manufactured home development on that property right now, it's legal. What would happen? They, they could legally do it. It would still be safe. Standards, right? They would have to that. meet the performance standards in there, yeah. but there would be not a whole lot that we could say. On it. Good point. Yeah, that was my good point. I think this is let's get rezoning this. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the other one? <laughs> All right, uh, um, moving right along, yeah. moving along here. So, you're good. Okay, perfect. Second, second time, any public comments on this matter? And third time, any public comments on this matter? All right, hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, and staff recommends. <laughs> What's your pleasure? I'll move to recommend approval of the reasonable request and forward the recommendation on the village board for the August 21st meeting. Second. Motion by Mumper, second by Deason. On the question. Hearing now, all those in favor, state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Okay. Just thank you for attending. Yeah. yeah don't, don't buy your fence yet. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any point, too, if you have any questions, if you're curious if there's anything moving forward, give her a phone call okay. or shoot her an email or Aaron or, Aaron. Okay. or Valerie. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, new business project number 20230021. Specific implementation plan. Well, oh my gosh, let's start over. Specific implementation plan amendment number one approval for 6207 business highway 51, tidal wave auto spot, Gage Engineering Incorporated, Squaz Properties LLC. Kensington Development Partners, on behalf of owner MKB Weston Chu LLC, the number 192-2808-192-3987. So you all approved the first submission of this um, earlier this year. Someone was sending out the approval letter. Um, they were notified by the DNR that they needed to make some changes to their stormwater and move the building so that caused some changes to the site um i think the floor everything was shifted a little bit more to the north mm. yeah, yeah i think it was right on the north yeah, it was, it was right on the so, so they, they shifted it over did that prevent them from digging into that wall with michael or that bank that bank was, um, you know, can you guys hear me online here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, hi, I'm, uh, my name is Brad Ovanic. I'm with Cage Civil. I'm, I'm here to uh, talk about the project and can clarify a little bit. Um, so the building was shifted uh, five feet further to the south. Um, it, it started out five feet uh, from the property line. And a bit later in the game, uh, during the building permit review from the state, uh, they had clarified that the building needed to be 10 feet. And if it was not, uh, then all of the materials on that side of the building needed to be fire rated. Uh, and that side of the building is majority is glass. I want to say 70 or 80 percent of the side of that that side of the building is glass. Um, and therefore, tidal wave. Uh, since that's their standard to have glass on that side of the building, uh, would not budge on uh, making that fire rated and basically taking all of the glass away, which is why we shifted the building five feet further uh, to be 10 feet from that property line. Okay. The configuration layout, everything else in the plan is the same. We should be building up, right? Yes. yes. It, every everything remains the same. It just becomes a little bit more crunched in a little bit. You know, the the driveway to the south. Um, I think we had either fifteen or eighteen feet before. Now we're making it twelve feet. 
still works. Um, Tidal Wave usually likes to have a, a little bit more there, and uh, but but they were fine using 12 feet there, and then we just squeeze it all a little bit tighter. So same same orientation. Um, everything is is pretty much the same. Does that full head curve on that cell side? Is it what? I'm sorry. Like full height curve? It is. Model? Yes. Yep. Because you want it that way, or because the answer you have? Uh, we, I mean, so we have, we have full height curb. Um, we, that's what tidal wave standard is. Um, that's what we prefer from a stormwater and drainage standpoint. If there's ever any, uh, any, uh, stormwater running in that curb, um, it helps contain the cars uh, a little bit better as well. Um, in addition to that, you'll notice that we also have on the South side, uh, a retaining wall, um, that we are on the low side of that as well. Um, separating us from the, the neighboring property. There's, there's a decent amount of slope over there. Mm -hmm. I guess my only, my only thought with that is especially with things getting tighter, a vulnerable curve for plowing in the winter, maybe the, maybe the way to go down there, but I, that's, I, I'm fine with either way. That's your prerogative, I guess. I'm just making that suggestion. Yeah, it, 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 you will notice, actually, I don't know if you can tell on the site plan, there are a few areas that they use what they call, quote unquote, roll curb, which is basically mountable curb in some areas. I, I do like the idea of adding it in some areas, especially on that that southern uh, driveway. Uh, I know we have it in a, in a few areas um, near, I believe, the exit of the car wash. Uh, when you exit on that top left corner there and you turn left, they have that uh, on the on the inside curb. Yep, right there. Uh, they like to have the uh, mountable curb there in case anybody turns a little bit too fast. But I, I agree. I'll certainly pose that question to Tidal Wave and, and let them make that decision. Yeah. We have a concrete guy in the relationship and you want to see him often, that's on you. That's your pleasure. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Garen, second by Pinson. On the question. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Still carrying. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Have a great night. One real, real quick question. When are you guys starting? Uh, as soon as possible. Uh, within, oh. within the next couple of weeks, hopefully, um, we'll, we'll make sure we have all permits in hand and all good to go. But uh, they, they were all geared up and ready to go um, before until this came, came back last minute. So they're, they're starting soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, item number nine, discussion on the development review and permitting process you will involve. This is new. Okay. Um, so I personally have some negative feedback with how Evolve works. I talk to other developers. Um, I don't think I'm a big player in the developer department, but other developers and other residents that think our Evolve system can be improved. Um, I did a free Google search um, of other municipalities that use the same software. And even their look and feel of it is much better if you scroll down and have it to. Uh, 82. So those three are new to Evolve within the last year. So the way that Evolve works is they roll things out to their, basically to us on an annual basis. So anything that they build for us, they would roll out to others. They do that kind of on a once a year. Um, Emily met with them last year and Nate is in the process of setting something up. Um, I think we're supposed to do it on Thursday actually. Um, to talk to them about the different modules that are available. And they clarified that Marshfield is new, Eau Claire is new, and that is why it looks like that. Can so, you, who's on the Zoom? 
Can you just Google lesson evolve and yeah, so, so you can actually see it real on the screen? I took pictures and wrote that in there. So you got all that, you can see it, it was harder. So ours and Oshkosh and the city of Wausau, they all look the same right now because we haven't been able to this out yet. So as soon as they roll it out, we can make changes, but they only do that at certain times. Um, and we haven't had our chance to make them done yet. So what main gem is that they uh, they march field or one of the other communities requested? I'm guessing that they just changes. signed on with them because I wasn't aware that there were any more with So uh, when you say just signed up, so they didn't ask, they weren't on before and asked for somebody to have, like that. So they would have just probably become crowds. So Marshall, they know, has been in the process. A lot of communities, especially with COVID, had to find online community software. And there's only certain ones around. Um, oh, so they got them more So they got them right away. So okay. they, so Evolve is out of California. They deal with communities all over the United States. So basically, when someone makes a change, usually we get a choice to have it or not. Like when they were building things for us, the licensing here for like local licensing and things like that, it's totally different than um, anywhere else outside of Wisconsin. So they built that special for the Wisconsin communities. There's been other things, they make upgrades all the time, but we get the choice or not to um, actually right. put them into our system. Typically, it's been the assistant planners <laughs> who have sat down. So Emily sat down last year. Jared was the one that was heavily into the background sure. of that. So with Aaron being new, he hasn't even learned that, like the background stuff yet. So that's some of what he'll be carrying on, and then I will be sitting down. I was involved the entire department, and then there were other departments that were involved when we first started involved. I thought you had maybe mentioned that like Marshall requested some modifications to the software. No, I think this is just something that's new because I've never seen it. They must have feedback from clients or yeah, or after a while, villages I'm sure. or communities or cities that we want some. Yeah, because that one looks like just like old clips. So and I didn't know Claire was on. So I'd like to share my experience because I'm in this right now. Um, and I think you and Roman specifically, because you guys have helped me through this quite heavily. From a time standpoint, I can see by being more streamlined, helping you guys out, actually everybody in the village, because I mean, I had a lot of phone calls back and forth with you guys, a lot of emails, just to make sure that I'm doing the right things or I'm finding the correct things. Um, so I can definitely see by streamlining that more or easier. And I'm not a developer, and I don't know. I mean, I went through because I'm cheap and I draw my own community, not realizing I could be Nick at MTI to do it. But again, yeah, I mean, I stumbled through it, I got through it. But from a time commitment standpoint, not only from myself, but as far as getting time from you guys too, if we can make that more streamlined, because I did, I mean, I had some hurdles to get through to just make sure that things were correct. You guys are multiple submittals, you know, things like that. So, how many people are you guys seeing like me that go through the community process themselves versus just having, you so know, a designer? Many. Okay. So typically it is an MTS or RBI. Sure. Because it's overwhelming. To do it, it is overwhelming. What about your residential customers? The residents aren't going to go through a site plan and have that much of a problem. I need to pull a bench permit. Well, many of them can do it on their own if they don't, if they, they call and somebody comes in and we yeah, can do it over the you, phone you with them. them in the lobby or something too, right? Yeah, they come here and they sit down a lot of times. Um, Aaron and Travis, any lot gallery, they're helping them. So it's just they have to call. But many do it, they like they can do it online at night. I mean, a lot of people can't come in during the hours of working. And, and that's what I'm getting at. So to Travis' point, if Michael, if you show our site how it is right now. So typically when somebody calls so about a permit, Valerie sends a ginormous like step-by-step -step email that pretty much walks you through everything. If I call between eight and five. No, or if they email. A lot of times a so lot if of I email at eleven PM right? on Sunday night, I'm um, gonna get email back already from Valerie. Not no, on Sunday, yeah. but on Monday. Right. But what I'm saying is look at our site right now. And where would I how do I even know what permits are available? That's on the website. So they're never going to get to the site from there. They're going to go to the website first because, like I said, there's a button there for on 
the online that can get you to evolve and we can tell them that there's also a backslash. But if they're coming and looking, if they're not going there yet, they're going here. Yeah. And the residential building permits are off to the side. And it explains what permits we require. Can this use some work? Most definitely. So it sounds like you're, you're, you guys are looking into some. Oh, yeah. Easy I mean, it's, this is a constant change on things. I mean, the learning curve for people, um, I mean, when we first started this, we had builders, uh, like the construction guys, so oh, did long. not want to even do it. So Scott was sitting down with them. COVID forced people, I mean, we we're way ahead on this. It's changed. During COVID, like, we, we didn't miss a beat. Like they tossed us out of the office and we were still doing stuff because we were all online and you know Roman does those guys do FaceTime inspections with people. They you know I have people submit YouTube videos um, for work that they completed. So I mean, he actually spends a lot of time on videos on how to fill out a permit. So those are out there too. It's just that they get forgotten about by after a while, but there are him and Tom spent a lot of time in, during COVID, actually. I think yeah, we've got, I mean, we've got two YouTube videos that we produced up there for um, how to create an account, how to submit uh, several different permits. Yeah. Yeah. The information is all so, there. It's just when, when are you planning to meet with people? I think it's Thursday. That it's sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, website you need to see to do for. Um, it's just been a lot of staff turnover, so we have to make time to get everyone up to speed. I, yeah, so we're in, the, we're in the process of the website we made too, and we're trying to link connections from the website into Evolve. I don't know if we want to get too far ahead. Well, it doesn't happen, but I don't know exactly what's going to change on the website, so I don't right. want to spend a lot of time updating that until I know what website we're going to have. And how it's going to look like. I don't know if it's changing or not. We're still using Evolve, right? Yeah. We're running out of that. We were planning on changing it. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. Obviously, it's only get better, right? Yeah. Really Can you just pull up ours real quick, Michael, just to show like an actual full screen? So that to me. Right. And yeah. that's a landing page that we can build after we yeah. meet with them. So basically, we can put whatever we want on there. But when they created ours, we basically went with if you look at ours, it looks very similar to last year. We were, that's how we built it off. It has been the city of Boston. Yeah, yeah nobody's ever changed change. that front page. Right, right. I'm yeah. just saying in eight years, probably need to get closer to that. I'm, right, I'm but I think this is new. So that's. Well, I'm when was it done. evolved? Is it? 17, 17 we launched it 5 16 or 17. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, Prior to that, we had the first <laughs> <laughs> Prior to that, we used the internet. I hope my deck there, you're using it. Yeah, we used it early. So, we've been using an internal version for a long time. So, that stuff is loaded up there. So, that's why you might see things when you look at it. They might say, what did it say? 20. So, well, so the previous two nine 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 like well, some weird dates. There's you know because we had multiple systems prior to that. So wherever the data was imported from, if there was something skewed with with the imports, some of the dates are uh, really goofy here. Um, but all so the images are attached to it, so you can make that up. Typically, yeah. typically. So it boils down to as we're working on trying to streamline a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, it's always ever making it better. I mean, there's things I've made notes on since I've been in Minute Month on what I want to change or like what's required. So, yeah. I didn't even think of water and water. I just, I get that whole Travis. I just have to do it because I would, I'd go. Well, and sometimes, to be honest with you, I have the guys just send it to me because what they do is they'll, we never get a complete one. So I can't open them right off the bat. So sometimes it's easier for us to fill it out or have them generically fill it out and then us put the plans up so that I can see what they have. Because we also use our filing system on the server to kind of map that stuff out too. So we've got it on involved and we also have working folders in there and final folders. But we never, I mean, we never get a complete slate. And Tim Rowe was probably the first one that we ever got that yeah. was completely, there's always something like, I mean, we just got really into things. So there's always 
little things right. that are left out missing. with the conditional uses tonight. Those elevations came in at the tenth hour. So if you don't get full site, full plan, you can't I, open it. I don't open them typically. We'll look at them and we'll give them suggestions right off the bat. But if you read by the spirit of the code, as soon as I deem it that it's that it's complete, the clock starts picking on it for certain things too, and we have to approve it in a certain period of time. So Even some of the things, the if they don't have so you, you can view it without opening it. Oh, yeah. We just okay. won't, I, I we guess just I was won't open it completely okay. and start that oh, class. Vanilla, vanilla. So that's what yeah. happened with, with <laughs> I, the was I was thinking, thinking the same thing. <laughs> they didn't have it. And then all of a sudden, it was, oh, no, we're going to change like the whole site plan. That's what took so long with them. They, should, they redid the whole site plan. They were sure. like, oh, no, we're going to redo it. So we just got new plan. So sometimes we just don't, they're kind of still well, working on. I think we should give staff some time to meet with the ball. Absolutely. And, and let them, pick, I mean, if you want to bring it back here and ask us what we yeah, think, we'll it's going to be great. But, but some of it is we just need to get in there. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see if they have a checklist available? Um, so like there's the internal checklists that are there's, in there. If you notice it with a new home permit, there's a checklist when you go into that application. Okay. Yeah, this is that we need for the permit application. But does Evolve have something that's more user friendly? Like if you go in and try and build a new commercial building right now, it's very so we have to put the checklist in there. So Perfect. what I have been doing is gone back to the paper site plan application that has the checklist on there so that they know what they need to have it be complete because that's where we were getting the breakdown. They needed a piece of paper. So, I mean, you might see some of those as being, they get a piece of paper that explains this is what you need for your permit. But so, can, you, can you do that electronically on your So, let's say we need, we can put a big PDF that's downloaded right there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is, is that what you're well, asking? No, what I'm asking is, can you have five boxes? And your site plan, and your landscape plan, and your lighting plan? Yeah, so I pulled all work. 2019, I did a house. Yep. And that was all on there. Everything was kind of check off. It's with every document for that. So I think right. you're referencing the commercial site. Or, well, on all of it, for everything. If there's commercial, residential, like I did a residential one in 22. And there, there was some of that, but there was still, I think, one thing that, or, or there were boxes that didn't apply. Uh, like it asked you for, I don't know. Well, we have to build things for everything. Yeah, Maricopa County needs a sanitary permit if it's out of the country. Yeah. Right. Um, so yes. that needs to be on there, even though it doesn't. Yeah, why not be pertinent to you? You know, yeah. but you can't filter that when you go through. You like, can't turn that off on our. You right. can't turn. So when I when I say, hey, I'm one, two, three, any street that's in the village, or you know it has sewer water, it doesn't. The system, the city hall does not know if we have what houses have sewer water. Oh, Currently, that I'm aware of. Well, that's a question. Okay. Third nationwide company is the sewer that we can get Well, we actually know what, what, if, it was, if it was Esri and all of our storm or all of our sanitary and that sort of stuff was in there, then then it's an easy mesh for the company. But with this permitting software, um, Esri is much more expensive than a month for that. So sure. This was. At that point in time, we went online, which is definitely the most cost versatile <clears throat> with all of the modules that we have, plus the cost. Really. Question to ask though is if they could take our sewer data and get them all. Well, there is a data assumption, but I don't know. We don't use it, right? Well, then you're going to need an annual update almost. So it's just, yeah, yeah, you would. As soon as you extend one, <laughs> one yeah. house, okay, cool. Now you don't have it. Yeah. There you go, right? <laughs> That's sort of a question for the other side. And if you don't want to do it annually, then the year is. Right. So that might be the one or the five houses that don't make it, but any of the other ones, it will show. Okay. Hey, anything else on that? All right. Hearing nothing? I right. guess so. We did have a pow wow last week. We still more of a, 
I guess the utility side as far as how we evolve and interact with our uh, kind of work order software for when we create inspection and things like that. So, does it interact? Does it play well? We're, yeah, we're working on that. Um, it will. It, it will. will. Yeah, I mean, we're going to add some checklists and some other things on the back end. So, and we're changing who um, is seeing that permit initially. So, instead of going to the kind of clerk staff, it's going to our utility superintendent so we can make sure everything is it, it is approved. It's there before we're you know creating a work order or somebody going to inspect something. So, um, so yeah, so, so we did make some of those modifications already. Internally, with the uh, utility inspection lateral permits that happened. So. Excellent. Good job. I think, again, in, in my situation, I appreciate everybody helping me. And I think maybe what I'm understanding is, Jim, if you're saying that we can make this more interactive to lessen the load on the staff where they can just go online Absolutely. and get yeah, yeah, yeah. very simple. Yeah. Yeah. We take a little time off. And the easier it is for the customer to. Do it without calling staff and time. You guys have enough stuff to do during the day, I would think, that you don't need to talk to me or Steve or anyone else about a permit. If we can just do it ourselves online. Oh, well, I understand. You still have to have that available. But if we could do it completely solo or 80% solo versus 50% solo, that's going to give you guys more time. So I'm going to go out and put their minutes. Yeah, we would have to look to see how many people are coming in, but they are primarily open. No, or that term is that old. He, he talks to us via email. That's, no that's, no yeah. that's no different than the back and forth that we do with the program. So yeah. there's always a back and forth on a site. I can tell you that that's why I like I like to use Nick with it because those guys are used to it. They do so many with you guys. Why do I want to try to do that? I, mean, yeah, I just don't want to mess with it. I just don't want to mess with it. Mess with it. One more thing I'll get pissed off. I'll be honest with you, I didn't know Nick did it. No, I did mine. I mean, I didn't know that that I mean he already did my site plan and everything. So for him to finish the process, I would probably just have to do it. Oh god, yeah. You know, especially now knowing yours would have been a lot faster. <laughs> but again, I didn't you know I had no idea. Well, right. I did. Could you Most elaborate on that? <laughs> it just, it was, I mean, it was, you know, you, like I said, Jim, I mean, you guys helped me through it, which I very much appreciate it. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't realize that Nick, you know, the last one I did the same thing on, right? I did from it because Randy, the builder, doesn't want to Randy doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do any of it. So I just kind of got let, you know, hand it over here to take care of all this stuff. Had Randy or even Gary from prior to getting down the path that I was on, I would have totally had Nick just handle it. So that everything was done and you know done right the first time, but I didn't know that at that point. So, but I very much appreciate you guys walking me through it because we got through it. I think. Painful, but. Well, there's a new problem. I can't see the rest of it. Great. That's enough of that. Item ten: Request to remove the requirement for development agreements on permitted use, non fit funded projects. So I put this on the agenda. Um, it was late last year. Um, in an effort to streamline things, we got rid of the completion surcharge fee um, because we were getting some pushback on it. So we went to the development agreement on all projects. So I've now been through <clears throat> a summer basically with that. And I can say that it's probably a lot of busy work. And in talking to Kristen, um, at redevelopment resources and also attorney Edie. Um, they're like, why for permitted uses? Why are you asking for those? Um, their suggestion is just to use them on the traditional use permits because you're giving them some special mm -hmm. things and the tip district tip funding like we had before. So basically what happens is I that's been the hold up on a lot of projects is getting that signature because we have to send a document to them. They have to give us originals back. Sometimes these people are out of state. Um, and then you have well, to send it to the county, it. and the county doesn't yeah. send it back for They want to make sure they want to make sure what they're signing is yeah, it's they'll, it's they'll, their attorney. Yeah, they'll change it up and yeah. Yeah. Like that. So, so it, it is a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of communities are probably doable, right? 
but some are, I think, occurring when they're one year or something. But I oh. just don't think it's, I think it's overkill because no matter what, if something if it comes down to it that somebody doesn't do something, I'm not saying the court anyway. And they've given a site plan, it's either got, I mean, they're, yeah. I can probably beef up the site plan letter stating, you know, that they know requiring them to maybe sign the application and things like that, just so that they know. I mean, I'm attaching everything that gets approved with that letter, so they're getting it back saying if you have to, you know. I think that's build it that way. I think that's a good idea. I mean, it's just if you have that letter and you have a signature on the bottom of that letter, well, it's that, telling them that they that's, have. Well, and they're also acknowledging that they read it and agreed to it. Mm -hmm. This is the way I look at it. I mean, I mean, they're I, submitting these plans, and then Travis is going back over and making sure, and if something doesn't jive, you let them know, and they just. <laughs> some of them are sitting out there. They still have to do this stuff. So are you asking for this five thousand dollar no. ransom money to come back? Or? No, I'm not. So no rent. No rent. Well, it, it, that doesn't even get us anywhere. Does it? So. It, it does frustrate people. So if well, we have to also have the finance department refund that. It's yeah. Usually sitting there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think some some of it, guys, too, is is ultimately. I mean, I I do see that to be a, a kind of a push along to get something done, just as long as. That doesn't hold you guys up of getting stuff done, or that it lingers out there and gets forgotten about. It, right? I know, mean, from a commercial standpoint, like you said, five thousand dollars is pretty inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Would a development agreement to help us at all on the gold key issue? Gold key? No, because that would no. Which I actually have units for that. One. Uh, the parking lot. No, so that was oh. that was like back in two thousand. Right, but it, at the time, if we had been doing development. Oh, no, we still have to perform. I have minutes. That's so essentially with the gold key, key one. I noticed it a number of years ago and was questioning why it didn't wasn't like everything else and why he didn't have to finish it. And I went back digging through the minutes and found the minutes. And at that, and if you remember, anybody who was around in the early you know, late so 90s, early 2000s, things used to come in like at the end oh. hour. And a lot of times it was like, okay, work with staff on this, or okay, yeah, I'll do that. Well, Stan basically said in the minutes that he would cave it and have curb and all that kind of stuff in the landscape. It was in the minutes. So, right. I mean, it's there. Everything was done through I guess I would, and board. I think that was at the board level. I guess that was my only question was, I didn't want to. No, uh, it's just if it's giving us teeth when someone doesn't no, do what we any say, any time that they don't that they stop working with us, we have to take it to there's either citations, which is what Matt likes us to do first, but in order to get something fixed or for us to be doing it, we have to go to court anyway. So no matter what, we would have to support. I'd rather, I mean, I'd like to see that the guys have some kind of Something to hold over somebody. I don't think it's well, I mean, even that letter with a signature on it. Yeah. Well, but you're saying you're you're okay with the ransom. I didn't think it was a bad thing as long as it gets taken back. I mean, if you, you don't finish, you don't. I mean, it makes people finish your stuff faster. I, I agree. Five thousand dollars isn't going to pay the parking lot, but no. if someone said, "Hey, Gary, would you like five thousand dollars back?" I'm pretty sure you're going to shake your head six to twelve and ask, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's. I don't think it's a bad thing. I, what What is your guys' opinion on that? What do you see? I mean, do you see people say, well, oh well, I'll get to it when I get to it. If there's that's no my concern. Out. That's my concern. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of checks and balances in place, right? There's the timing of the permit. All right. So if that if it drags out there for you know two years, you know, in a house, for mm -hmm. example, if it drags out there for two years, you know, the permit's null and void, they gotta pull the permit to do any any work after that point, right? So we can pull a new permit. Which is twenty five hundred dollars, you know. So I mean, there's there is stuff in place. Do we ever have to threaten that we're going to withhold our occupancy surcharge? Yeah, there's a couple times where we've had to say, if you if you start loaning this house, you're losing a thousand bucks. How do you want to do it? And then it typically, it's like, okay, we'll just finish, wrap up this stuff that needs to get wrapped up, and move in next. So the houses still yeah. have the thousand. The houses, it's a thousand dollars for houses and five thousand or twenty five hundred is what it was for current. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, on the commercial end, if you took that away, what, what is your opinion for that? I mean, are you going to get a final inspection on that, or is it going to, does it ever just lay in the weeds? Or could, I mean, yeah, there's some bits of stuff in the past, yeah, that there's stuff up just there. Right just, well, they'll get their occupancy, it's usually the landscaping. That's usually what's out there right now. Well, Travis is, I mean, he's we're he's finding a bunch of stuff on last year, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's some stuff out on uh. The business park south that can stay wrapped up, you know, and that's that's what Travis does. He does a follow up inspection and sends out the emails to whoever's out there. You know, typically it's landscaping. Okay. Typically it's landscaping. And are so, they still? Are they? Have you? Are they open? They needed to find their back, or they didn't have to turn that five thousand. Um, um, specifically the Northcon project. I don't recall if that had. Northcon has five thousand. But they have five thousand. Yes, yeah, so that has been. But they haven't even. Did they ask someone? Like, no. Most of the time, nobody, nobody they forget about it. Yeah, most of the time. I think it's part of permits or something. So, what we used to do, and we haven't done, we stopped during COVID, but prior, um, Jared and Roman at the time were taking, we usually gave them a couple of years because it's not like we're standing up there waiting. It's like, are you done? Are you done? Are you done? So, we started kind of a program where if they were three years out, they would get kind of a reminder letter. And hey, are you done? That's <laughs> a long time. Can yeah. we come and do this? Well, that's why I asked for the thing to come through quarterly. And last, I mean, the last like, two months ago, I was thinking there was some stuff that was like, really, we haven't talked to this guy since October. Or we did, but it wasn't on the well, sheet. It's easy for us. We're all busy. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for us all to forget. We it. don't do a lot of the drill construction season because we're busy. Oh, so did. basically, after that, and usually they don't have a second list and they don't feel like like anything that starts up right now, we probably can't talk to them until maybe the end of next year or it'll be 25 because they may or may not. Sometimes they're not seen <laughs> with the projects either. But your That's residential not. ones, you have no problem with turning those, right? You no. always have your residential developer not going to endorse me anywhere from a thousand dollars, right? Daniel's tempted his finance department says, hey, why have we got this money back yet? Yeah. Exactly. So, so residential is good. Commercial, there's Sometimes they how many lines, ignore it. Oh, I understand <laughs> that, but how many lines are on an Excel sheet? Like 30 now? Yeah. There's 30 items we can look at. They're either returned or not returned. Or now there's going to be a one year. Well, actually, block like, there's not very many that um, they that are going to get returned. Because that, so when, when you asked for that, it was starting last year. So it's just like the North Cop. There's only a few that actually were. So, what is your opinion, guys? I mean, what Travis, Travis, you. He's been here six months. What do you what do you want to tell Um I think that from the ones that don't have the landscaping in five thousand dollars and I think probably across the landscaping. Mm -hmm. So like you that we're all the So so sure. but at that point, why why don't you just put a why 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 don't why don't you put a uh, a term on it that it's not done in two years after the project, you just have getting fines. Uh, on top of your and don't get your five dollars back. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I agree. Five thousand dollars. I don't think it's a bad thing. Gary, mm -hmm. at what point do we get other businesses in here then? When then you've got a brand new business sitting here that's being held accountable for landscape, and then you've got a business that's been grandfathered in for however many years that this guy says, "Why well, you make me do this? You've got like that." But we can allow that now because the code changed. That's sort of Well, it's either you want to build or you don't. I don't mean to be rude, but I right. mean, I, I, I believe there's a certain there's changes, right? There's changes in in, in, in what we're doing every day in our lives. But um, I mean, I've I've asked you and I've challenged Jen on a lot of on a lot of stuff. She'll tell you, I just asked her. I mean, um, she requires some stuff. I'm like, well, what the hell? This three of my neighbors don't have this shit. Why do I have to do it? Well, code change. Okay, well, that's great. My, my luck, right? But but that's what happens, and that's what's required. And if you want to do it, then you, you got to do it. Um, and I don't. I think we've come a long ways over the years with some things that we've relaxed on. I really do. But I, I also don't think it's fair that somebody you can be in your position where you go out there and now you're wasting you're waste, wasting taxpayer time out there on a guy that. Maybe three years later, it doesn't have his landscaping done. He can give a shit about his five thousand bucks, right? How are you going to get his landscaping done? Because that doesn't set a good example on the village requiring this. And his neighbor, if he doesn't have it, he's saying, "Screw it! I don't. I'm not going to come up with a with a new term, and I'm just going to avoid it." 
Well, then there should be some penalties for that. Well, there would be, but. So couldn't you just issue them temporary occupancy? Well, I'm assuming so it's 100% completion. Well, we give the completion. So instead of holding, because some banks, so the problem is we used to do that. Mm -hmm. And then some banks, depending on how they were structured with their loans and things like that, the loan. they want to close the loan. So they well, have to have their loan closed. closed. Mm -hmm. Not being rude. We can give occupancy on the building without the site being complete. And that's almost always what happens. Right. Right. But if you give, Full more thumbs up occupancy. I'm not putting my tree here. Because yeah. no, $5,000, you're yeah. not going to buy insurance yeah. for my We're probably or putting that second with the asshole. But if you give me temporary yeah. occupancy that says See, I have not 11 not months to hang trees and my second with the asphalt for that temporary occupancy, mm -hmm. the bank sees that letter too, and they're not going to fund the project. Trees and those yeah. trees so the bank's going to say, hey, Joe, did you put your trees in yet? You have the thumbs up for the village of Weston, and then they'll get their finances. I don't want to hold the project up, but you still have to hold the developer accountable. Is there any sort of like tax? Right? I mean, any sort of, you know, how you can incorporate something with your tax bill that says, hey, you haven't fulfilled your obligation to the landscaping plan. I think that you can put that on the site up. Then you can. Yeah, so if we work. do the citation rule, but on something like that, typically it goes through. Circuit court. Circuit court. So, so basically, what we would do is Travis would give them basically a letter, whoever's going out there, whatever's missing, okay, this needs to be addressed. You have until such and such a time to call us or have it complete. If they don't do that, then that, the next step in the past has been the lawyer sends a lawyer letter. <laughs> and sure. usually that helps and they get it done. If not, then it goes to circuit court and they go through a process where they basically, you know, we have the site plan. That's what's got approved. And they'll say, you need to install it. So, and it you gets put a on, hmm? You put a lien on the property then? I have not ever had to have where they haven't installed it. Because generally in construction, that gets everything done real quick. Mm -hmm. Once you put a lien on somebody, what's that intent? <laughs> I was gonna say, like, you know, we like somebody doesn't mold their lawn. Eventually, we just go mow the lawn and say we're charging for it. Yeah, I mean, that's well, that is a special assessment. Yeah, they yeah, we we like, they hey, made us your... do something different with that, though. But, we used to be able to just mow it, like send somebody to mow it. Now we have to post it for thirty days. Yeah. So, so my question had nothing to do with lawn mowing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you want to put a special you assessment? Want, so, so I want to, like, we had a letter that they signed and said. After 24 months of being my occupancy, I will have my landscaping. If not, the village will install it for me. Oh, that's a and great special assessment. And you will pay for it. Yeah, then that's what you do. Yeah. Then you don't need to only do that on public property, though. Okay. I, yeah, I didn't know if there was a way to do that as part of the How can you do that? How can you do that if you, if you can send somebody to go more than one and check? Oh, so, so the abatement process, well, I'm going to ask you a good question. Yeah. So we probably would follow the same. It would be in the basic process. It's the non summary. Mm -hmm. There's so, two different there's summary and non summary data. They didn't put that in. And so there's a process you have to follow. And then once they don't meet, so they either have to file an injunction to keep us off the property at the court, or we can go and do it in charge. So, like for debt's property, when the staff was taking it up last year. All of the charges went on as a special assessment on the tax, but that was three citations that they failed to yeah. appear for in circuit court. So, that the one in Newport? Yeah. yeah, there's a dumpster out there. Then. And how uh, much did that cost us? us? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even go by the other day and I saw it. I really think the wife out. And the neighbors are watching uh, that one. So Yes. How yeah. much did that cost us in lawyers' fees? Uh, I don't think too much because it was pretty, pretty quick. This year. I mean, she failed to show on all three of them. You should be able to recover that. So, yeah, right. yeah. yeah it's, I mean, you know, everything associated with that abatement that gets, sure. gets, put in, gets put on as a special assessment. So he actually wanted to pay for it before we even special assessment. So he was so happy to end up the yard. So what if you what if so what if you don't have an occupancy? What are you going to do? Get the birthday with? Yeah. You, you don't get my answer. No, no, no. If, if you get, if these guys give them occupancy and you and you 
Let's just say you give a doctor occupancy and you say one on the building, but not the site. Yes, yeah. there's, there's a completion. So the site completion is what they get at the end. But there's no teeth in that. The bank doesn't care. The, the well, bank's already financed and done and gone. If you give temporary occupancy, though, know, the bank isn't going to play fun. Well, but then they'll be planting some trees real quick. Yeah, that's like, I mean, what I got going on. I mean, I'm going you're, to... you're going to be done in the middle of winter. Yeah, if you don't want occupancy and you can't put in this landscape. No, I, I understand that. So what I'm saying temporary. is, you give them at that point, when you give them a temporary or an occupancy, you say you got one year to fulfill this rest of the obligation. If you don't, you're sitting back in front of planning commission and telling us why or whoever whoever whatever board and telling us a, a reason why and we'll we'll put a parameter on when it needs to be done or or we can look into it or, or that, it was, some, that was too heavy of you know enforcement on things i mean that well, would have been looked at as not being and i'm going to say but if, you're, if, if you really so, got somebody over two years you said yeah. Oh, there's always like well, we just don't. No it's been over a full season since I've been there. What are they short on? Landscaping in the front yard. Well, you know, prior to it. Okay. Yeah, we've got the second lift out in. And have you called them here? Physically, have you physically called and say well, what's going on? That was two weeks ago. You did that site inspection. Have you had any? I mean, uh, part of I mean, some of that is really you guys may notice, and it may they. They're busy and they they probably go well. That's the last thing I'm worried about or didn't think about or forgot about. So you a nice courtesy call. Oh, and that's and that's that's what it does. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean that, that one might be an easy one because those guys are great guys. Yeah. Of stuff that's that always been an issue. Sure. <laughs> they don't feel like it, but um, yeah. always that's. So I mean, you got some rare projects like uh, Premier Sports. You know, they never put the second lift in. Yeah. Um, well, neither did the place down at the end of my road. It's been a long ass time. Oh, yeah. And some of that got like special, they got like special was, conditions to wait until a certain time. And well, there's got, but nobody thought about it. Well, they end up losing the it. The parking lot junk. You can't um, yeah, there is go after the new owner. Mm -hmm. So, dear, his sister runs it. Oh, not that one. I oh. didn't know that one. Yeah, that's bad. That's terrible going there. There's also just a bad stuff down there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> it comes down to what's what's most important. Oh, I get it. I understand it. I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. We have a list we've been keeping track of. We've got five raise orders that we probably have to work on this fall on different houses, sheds, yeah, buildings that they're just like all down. Yeah. There's a vacant house on Mount View that we have issues with Constantly. that they just walked away from. So. Yeah. But that all takes time too. So we've got it on a work plan for two. Well, I guess if we still have to go through the courts, I'm fine with, with only requiring this on conditional use and SIP projects. My opinion. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to make a motion to have staff draft an amendment for the next meeting to the zoning code to allow. Temporary occupancy of all new buildings, not full on occupancy, but temporary, contingent on landscaping or whatever items are missing at the time of what would you call it, your final inspection? Or, or final building inspection or final site inspection? Yeah. So there's the so final building inspection, that's when we would issue the, the occupancy on the structure. Okay. okay. So if you want to put the temporary occupancy on the structure. Yes, that's uh, that's so at that, that point. Are we so, talking about so, but commercial me, development? But let me ask, ask the Who question. Be? For the so, so you get a temporary, and what are you going to do? If, uh, what are you going to do about a temporary? Are you kick them out of the building? Well, if <laughs> the zoning code says if they don't have an occupancy permit, then they can't occupy the structure. It's temporary, right? Yes. Can you pull an occupancy permit once it's granted? So, I, so yeah, there, you know the specifics on that off the top of your head. I don't know that off the top of your head. I'm sure you can, but it's probably there's probably a what if they didn't meet the requirements of their of their well, you can do a stop work order on everything. Yep. So I mean that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Stop work order? We can do stop work order. After the fact, after we issue the temporary occupancy. 
Yeah. Or even an, a, a, I think what Travis said, would it, would it be yeah. gave them a full occupancy for the occupancy for the building, but they didn't have a site doc or site plan finalized, right? Because uh, landscaping wasn't done or they didn't have final quote on. Can't we just give them a one year termination uh, to get it done or one year one year extension to be done with it? And if you're not done, then get your ass in. You have some urban that can definitely go in there on the occupancy. You have the potential losing your occupancy, but your occupancy. But, but you might. Okay. Again, just my personal standpoint is again, if we do a uh, temporary occupancy, then the women's are going to be No, no, right? I said give, give, them their, worry. give them their occupancy yeah. for the building, but tell them that if they don't complete their site, final site plan, right, approval, that they have a, ch they have a chance, they got one year to complete that, and they got a chance of losing their occupancy by not fulfilling their agreement. My, my two cents for tonight would be, I think I would suggest we consult with Attorney Edie before we pick a path. Yeah, because I'm well, not sure. Did you read, did you read the, there was a comment in here about that. It says right here, um, this is an attorney from, there's an there's a email from Edie copied in into this and it says the suggestion is that the POC, that the PCBOT would like to keep this aspect of the new process that they no longer need Record unless they have special conditions or tip funding attached. And then Jen said she wanted to go a step further. Um, but Chris and Fish Peterson also agreed we should not require them on committee uses. Similar to Matt E. She thought it was overkill to not be looked at favorably by a larger out of town developers. That's, and I would stand to agree with that statement. That's, I would tend to agree also. On permitted uses. Well, I, I agree, but how do we how do we protect them from because honestly? There's places in our community that don't have their stuff finished and nobody's going back for half of them. Well, we are, depending on when they work. So, like I said, we have a list and then COVID happened and they stopped. So, Jen, it's, it's three, June 2016. Jen, let's go back to the one at the end of my road. It's been in for like 12, 14 years. And Jim, I know you keep saying that was three and a half years ago, but look at how much turnover we've had in our staff and how much building is going on here. We, we cannot continue to expect the moon out of these people. I, I get it. I, I will, I'm, I'm just saying, if I may. Okay. Um, There's been a lot going on. Having a new staff member come on board and having to get his credentials taken care of okay, is the number one priority mm -hmm. on this day. Scott leaving created a very large void in just day to day operations. Yep. I'm, I'm still like, I work on PTO. I work on the weekends to try and make sure that this stuff gets taken care of just on permit and sometimes. So all of the stuff that we've got to catch up on, we're fully aware that we got to catch up. No, no. I'm you saying, what I'm saying all I'm saying is let's put something in place so we don't have to play catch up. Right. That's all. That's all I'm saying. There, there's let's no, put something in place so that person has to get back in front of you if you're not done in one of your time after. You shouldn't have to be playing catch up in this bullshit. You shouldn't. It's it should be their responsibility. Like, their skin in the game. We're still going to have to communicate with them. Yeah. And we're still going to have to take Yeah, an email. An email. You're you're bound to come into the next meeting. If you don't yeah. show up, you're going to lose your occupancy. Or well, whatever we do. We have to put some skin in the game. Otherwise, you know, we look at that place at the end of the road down by me. That place was built 12 or 15 years ago. They still don't have final court. There's literally a swimming pool in their in their parking lot every goddamn. But that's just following up and having going about it, adding it to a list. It so is, that one's on the beaten path. I get it. We got to like, deal with the storage units on the south side of the road. Mm -hmm. It's a it is an absolute train wreck down there. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, they've got stored stuff. All they got trucks out in the woods. Yeah, uh, where's that? It's, at? it's you know it's all that guy with the right. it's the guy with the yeah the cabin guy. Yeah, he's yeah. got shit across the road. Unlicensed, uh, just yeah. So it's it's the, the enforcement stuff. Almost guy working there. What we're dealing with, around. what we're dealing with, is the stuff that's more visible because that is a higher, mm -hmm. higher, higher frequency. frequency yeah. there but what saying. I'm getting at is, I'm not saying you're not doing your job. I'm saying that you shouldn't. You, there should be policies and procedures put into place, so you shouldn't even have to be messing with this, right? It's up to the applicant that's here to build something to finish the goddamn thing. You shouldn't be chasing after them. Years of years down the road, it should be something that's automatic that comes up on the calendar that says, Whoop, This is overdue. 
is his landscaping done? Has he called? Maybe Travis runs out, checks. Oh, it's still not done. He gets an email automatically says you, you need to be on the next meeting. Something a little more automated that and has the client or whoever a customer that they should be accountable for it, right? You guys shouldn't have. Do you guys even have an agent report yeah. for stuff? Do you have like an agent report for stuff like this? Um, I mean, we can go see what's so like when the system when we haven't had an inspection in, in the system for six months, it automatically goes to expired status. You know, on a current standpoint. So I mean, there's we can utilize that, or we can look at. And having it more automated. Does so, Evolve have a calendar for you? Does the Evolve yeah. come? So why can't you ask Evolve to put a, a deal in there that says if you want to set up a, a permit extension or say if you want site plan done in one year, it does an automatic reminder one year that comes up on your calendar. I think it does not already. For a site two years, it takes time to work the total amounts. Oh, well, on, on two, two years? That's oh, what it said. Sure. I was just looking at it. But, yeah, but, but two years from the permit or from the completion? No, site plan approval. And then he's got another one for his permit. Perfect. So I have two years from site plan approval that, that has to be done. His building permit. So, like, say. So I was. So that's what I was saying. If project, you would have two years to take out the building permit. Okay. So if, if, if I get a building permit, Permit completion, he gives me a thumbs up. I'm good to go. I don't have my site plan. We don't out. close out the site plan until after Travis does yeah, so, it, and then I it generates a completion. Yeah, so I'm site. done. I'm done with my I did the building in one year, right? So that should give me one more year left on my site plan to finish up, right? Yeah, because I think you're two years, two years for from approval. It depends on the residential or commercial. 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 I think that's where we're really stuck on the commercial side right now. We're not worried about the residential. I would need the residential. Yeah, one. residential. Yeah. We have no problems with that. Yeah. So the state so of your plan will have three years before the Oh, three. Yeah. That's state state plan. Mine is so only two years. It depends on the size of the site. building, too. Right. On site. Yeah. So three years on site. Extra, I think it's 18 months of building permit that you, they have to be completed with their. Because the whole idea is that we give them an extra grant to see them. It's the thing I want to take it out to put in their last list because they don't want to put last list on me. So. Yeah. yeah. And there's no reason it was like our building. It got too late in the year. So then I had you guys come back the following yeah. spring when yeah. American yeah. did their stuff and then and the landscaping got done. Yeah. There's no reason Not why you another full there. year after you're done with a building that you moved into, why you can't have your outside stuff done. Absolutely well, no we reason. just tend to not like during the busy construction season, they would in the fall tend to go and look at stuff and see where they're at. And then over the winter is when we send out the letters saying, mm -hmm. hey, you need to get this stuff. But if it were automated, right? If there was something that came up. So you, you your your billing finished, you got occupancy December 1st, right? 12 months from then. If you on Evolve on your calendar, it popped up 123 Annie Street and 456 this Street. You got a thing that says, Hey, I didn't get their final site plan approval yet. Yeah. You don't even have to go visit 123 Annie Street because guess what's under snow on December 1st, right? Or if it's July 1st, it doesn't matter. I don't want you to spend your time going down there. Here's something you need to send an email. It's not your responsibility to get them compliant, it's your responsibility to inspect them. So say, Hey, Joe, uh, you put the trees in, or would you like to have this inspected? You forgot about it, you forgot about it, whichever. An email takes seconds. It should just be a draft letter, yeah. right? That you just shoot off. I, I, I somewhat agree. I guess I'll say I agree with uh, potentially the out of town customers or, or developers that are doing that, but there has to be some sort of skin in the game that they don't complete it because it's, it's too much on your guys' shoulders. And then we're looking at you, and what happens is that then all the source saying, Why did this complete it? And we're looking at you only like, I got enough. I got busy. I'm right. doing what I can do. I'm not doing it to attack you. I'm doing it to try to, but like, how did that miss the cracks right. and how can we make this easier on you guys? So it, it shouldn't have to be your responsibility. You can't remember everything either. Right. You know? So how do we how do we do that? Let's keep is there any, is there any way you can do a, a follow-up fee inspection or a follow-up inspection fee that progressively increases? We have a way for building. We typically are very good with the failed inspection fee. 
I'm just saying, like, say, sure. okay, they didn't complete their landscaping. You sent out an email. If we're, if we're going to do a reinspection on this day, if it's not completed, reinspection fee of doubles, thousand dollars. Three months later, we're coming back out again. If you don't have it done, reinspection fee is two thousand. That, that would be <laughs> something that needs to be added to the fee schedule. Our current, I think, reinspection fee is almost sixty. I'm just saying that that you know, if you start. Yeah. So you know, a big scary number, Adam. Yeah. I'm just throwing I'm just throwing it out as a possible way because then you can fill that right out of their tax bill, right? And now they really are, you know, potentially. Now we can fund another position. <laughs> Amen. I just have thrown out as a possible idea. Well, if it goes on the tax bill. No. Because really, what we're talking about is what are other communities doing? Can we ask that? I mean, this has got to be a 95% or better. There's not a problem. It's always the minimal percentage that create an issue of how you can deal with them. Right? I get like City of Oshkosh just for like nuisance code. If somebody's, if they have to send a letter to someone, like somebody yeah. complains, they get, they charge the resident for the like letter. So, well, I mean, there's book. different versions. Well, um, like Dave said, what is 60 bucks? It doesn't cover the cost of getting no, that, That's my of, point of making it. A lot of our fee schedules for permits and things have not been adjusted. I mean, I don't remember the last time. When it comes to fees, here's my thought I'm all for making it easy to work with commercial clients on the front end. When they start not doing what they're going to do on the back end, they get what they got coming. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. That's yeah. my opinion. Right. Do what you say you're going to do, or they made promises and then they're breaking them. Or, or you're going to get hit with what you got coming. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That's here comes the hammer. Yeah. And or if you got an email and nobody's responding and somebody responds and then you got the guy that responds and says, Yeah, I had very good schedule, then it's been a wet, whatever. I can't, but here's a letter from them saying they apologize and they'll get to it. You know, show yeah. some kind of right. You know, show show some kind of effort, yeah. Or can could get the landscapers maybe booked out two years or whatever. With I don't on reinspections. Yeah, well, I think we have to remember that there's been a uh, sentiment from the board that raise it fees too for a number of years. So well, well it as long as, that, as long as that there's support for doing all that, that's great. We can I it think it's back. different for regular fees, Keith, but yeah. this is a non-compliance fee that. If we're going to get rid of the five thousand dollars, right? If we're going to get rid of that, then there has to be some kind of skin in the game that the staff can and, and have it be easy for that a reminder that comes up that says, you know, if Evolve can do that, that'd be great on the commercial side of it. Typically, so I mean, typically when I fail an inspection and they have to be, um, I don't, I don't want. What, what, the, what I do is I don't issue an occupancy permit until they pay the fee. However, if we've already issued occupancy, then we have to look at how we're going to how are we going to structure the actual payment. Of the, Here's what of I would say: If you came to one of our projects and I had a sub under that that failed inspection, I I would probably grumble with you and say, "Really, you're here to do the inspection? And one of them failed. We'll get it corrected, and you, can you just come back and take care of it? Right? Yeah. You're not going to probably fight for that. It's to find that you you told you had a year to do this." Right. Sure. A year. And we sent you an email. And and you haven't completed it, right? Sorry. Here's an email letter that says, hey, are you done with this? If you're not, you know, there's going to be a, a, a reinspection fee of a thousand dollars. No, it's right in our right in our application, whatever it may be. Basically saying if you're failing to follow requirements of two years' time, then then you know, even your plan is good for three years, right? But she's saying their site plan is good for two. So it's really when the permit gets pulled or site plans approved, you got two years that it's good for again, right? Yeah. So one year to build a building. If they can't have their site plan done and it's the second year, there's something wrong. That's my opinion. My only thought is if you tie it to actual full on occupancy, if you give temporary occupancy, you won't get financing. So I don't know how many pro projects that you do or work with, any of your developers that pay it all in cash, but most of them probably no. finance, right? Well, you're, I'm assuming you finance your building. You wouldn't have got close if they were to give you a temporary if you didn't have something done. So correct. You wouldn't have wanted that either if you'd have been pissed. 
Yeah, so I think the temporary thing we can't do that. I agree. I think it's got to be occupancy and then put some stiff lines on it on the back end of it if you're not complying. I agree with you because, like, in my, in my scenario, uh, once I get full occupancy, then I can actually make a traditional payment. Up until that occupant structure in it, I am paying interest on that loan. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but wouldn't that be incentive for you to plant the trees? Well, absolutely. But now, in my case, I'm not going to be done in, I mean, my team is done in yeah, December, yeah. January. Mm -hmm. I mean, you I don't have an opportunity. I can simply interest that ten thousand well, dollars a month. Well, it's not only you could pay the interest, but the problem is what happens when the market's changing right now. You could have locked in at four percent. Now you're going to be pissed off at the village because now you waited until you couldn't get a ten or a final until you got completed, and now interest rates went up to six or seven percent, and now you're pissed. I mean, I could take it with palm trees. Well, palm trees in there. <laughs> well, I, you know, we're just being realistic. I mean, I, guess I, mean, I thought of that right away. You cannot do a temporary and hold somebody in that because you're never going to get their loan done. The bank's going to be pissed. They're going to do an extension on it, and then on top of it, the interest rates could go up, and then they real, then they could probably come back and say, hey, any, yeah, any solution that causes developers not to want to develop is a bad. Yeah. I, I think is a bad answer it's got to be enforcement costs somehow it's got to be a hammer on the back end yes so that that, that, and to, to know that, that to really know that we have, know, have to fail we have like to fail that. by doing our job you know, when you screw we fail, up then it's then, then it's then you're going to get it yeah and, and that that i think is the right right because you want the carrot to develop you know absolutely want, but you want to stick to follow through yep but you know but how you that's do i don't know like i said I just, that's why i just threw out the, the inspection because if you comply, you're never going to deal with it. Yeah. You know, if you just do what you said work. you were going to do, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And if, you know, if there were extenuating circumstances, like, you know, we had it snowed till June and then it got wet, well, then come in and say yeah, that. Yeah, that's always come in and say that. Yeah, come and show the meeting with the site contract. Like you said, here it is. I got my landscape and I got my permit for my asphalt stuff. It, yeah. It's going to happen and it's signed. It's done. Yeah. Once they have a motion. Anybody? Jen, is this something that we could, if, if we were to make a motion to have you look into what the ugliest guidance are and also ask the community if we were to give a temporary, or not a temporary, a, a zoning, a building permit occupants to for a building, but on the plannings or on the site plan site. approval is not completed at that time they got if we can come back with info for you but i'm not going to be able to make any cold changes because i have to have hearing notice for the next meeting by next thursday already so but do we have to change it that fast or? no but i would be able, i would be able to bring you something like we would be able to look into it during that time but i wouldn't be able to have the, something the other, I, the other item would be is if we if, if that was the case the only thing that would be is you've got two years from site plan approval. If they waited, let's just say there were some hiccups like with trip or whatever, couldn't get somebody there, and they waited a year before they got started on this building, just so that we wouldn't be finding them. They have to come back to you. Well, so at that point, then it would be, hey, we couldn't get started. We couldn't get the builder there for the first year right after we got our site plan approval. Building is done now. We ran in the fall and we can't get the landscaping and asphalt in. Okay, we're going to give you an extension for one year, right? That that would be something that would have to come in or a nice email sent out say, hey, are you done or not? Or, and that we would that would be the only thing that I would see in the two year deal, right? Because yeah. it's it's listed as it's called a sunset clause. It says all buildings on an approved site plan not fully developed within two years of final site plan approval shall expire. And no additional site development shall be permitted on undeveloped portions of the subject property. The appropriate site plan and approval authority may extend this period if it's requested by the applicant based on reasons beyond the reasonable of the applicant. So basically, that's the And a lot of it is because codes change, yeah. like, or state code, like, Requirements change, can change. No, the other hiccup could be it could be stated in there as well. That's it. The other thing I guess I would know or would want to ask is to make sure that we can get it put on the tax roll somehow that can be assessed on the taxes. That would be the next one. 
but then if there is um is there um what what did you just recommend again Jeff you asked for you were just saying the sunset clause? Yeah, oh yeah, sunset clause. My mind was going. If there's a sunset clause, maybe we can make a note in there that says okay, with an additional fine, you may be required to come up to the current code, which may be more stringent. Cost more. And we as a planning, whoever would be sitting there could make the determination if the guy's being an ass or a shyster, then you can. Bring it up to the new code. We're going to require it. We're sitting with yes. Or if it's your yeah. light poles are on back order for two years. Yeah. 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 When you're on back order, yeah. 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 When you're short, find a different yeah. yeah. So are we just requesting more information? Is that what we're doing? I don't. But I, Jen, your purpose tonight is to get the development agreements off of. The ones that are correct. The, the, yeah, that was my the ordinary. I mean, that was the yeah. That was my yeah. goal. So but then we just to get that one. Or at least not. Right. That doesn't mean that we couldn't come back after it. that. Right. So or at least not require those ones. You don't want development agreements for the normal. Because if it's just if it's something, I mean, I believe that I can talk to that, but I believe the courts would take uh, somebody copying and sending it back via email for signatures. And that would work. The county doesn't do that. So that's the problem is I have to have actually, I mean, we've had to have people come back in. ABC had to come in twice because something was wrong with it and needed an original signature. So that's the problem. It'll hold up some of that if I'm required to wait to issue. The county still requires a white signature, really. They have to have that is a, so progressive. <laughs> <laughs> and they try to be notarized. So. Yeah. I just can't believe that. that it's... Oh, they'll send it back. So then I, I'll actually send it, and then I will get a little letter that says, No, I'm sorry, you can't do this. So then I'm already a month behind the, you know, three weeks. So I guess we, we, sign we would want to, I guess we, we just have to make the decision if we want to have, if we're going to make that go away, do we want to have skin in the game right away before it goes away, or do we want to just let the flood go right now? I would say, yeah. So you're probably not going to get a pile of plans in here today. I'm fine. Well, I have Most some plans. that are going to be going out that are going to meet that. Signature. Yeah. Um, but we've done it this way for you. We wanted to change it to this way. So I think we've kind of made it better already. So it's really after the next six weeks of building season we have. And when we come up with a new plan next month, then we can implement it. But well, let's not change the plan until we know what we can do and how we can do it so we do it right. Not just jump into something. What's your opinion, Jeff? I will do whatever. Well, what, I... what is your opinion? What do you what do you feel is the right thing to do? We've changed to going with a memorandum, so the actual development agreement does not get reported. It's like this memorandum document that just states there's a development agreement on file here, and that goes there. That's the way that Matt has done it actually for all the TIF ones, um, and that helps us if something changes, like when ABC changed their um, site plan. I don't have to send a memorandum to the county. I would be in favor of. So I'm okay with the memorandum thing. Um, I, I would speak for Jen just as a, I can, not that I'm going to do it, but I've never met anybody in any job that would, wouldn't say I'd rather take the path that makes things easier. Uh -huh. I mean, you may be being polite, but that's my opinion. <laughs> well, yeah, this is it. What is the easy, without making a bunch of work, what is the easiest for you to do but still have? Something that you can get, that you can have a hammer to get a response back. I mean, well, that's yeah, the part I, that holds things up right now. Can I ask you something? Yeah. With my personal project, if I, and now I signed the developer agreement. Yeah, you did. Okay, so what is the different path that goes on today with the developer agreement versus tomorrow without the developer agreement? If I don't finish my landscape and I'm building for four years. You're still gonna either bring it in here or we're gonna go to court no matter what. It right? is the same. It's the same path. Mm -hmm. But it took me longer to get here to build it. Correct. But it, but, it, but, but it, you it, gave her five thousand. You gave her no, no. no. Oh, you did it. No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But, but, but what I'm asking, but what I'm asking at the end of the day is currently, um, when we were trying to get my quick start permit, I was at home. 
and I couldn't physically get here to get that done. So I didn't get an early start permit on it. But at the end of the day, no matter what, if we still have that document signed today, or if we get rid of it for tomorrow, when I don't complete my landscaping, at the end of the day, the path is the same to go to court to fix that. Is that yeah, the accurate? Summary, right? So yes. right now, by having that document, all it's doing is causing more more issue for you, more, more issue for the customer coming, site plan, all that stuff. Yeah. And it takes me longer to close out the site plan project. Because it's going to sit there. Like I have a stack of all kinds of stuff that have come back and have to go. We are also sending it over all the stormwater agreements and things like that. That all has to get then put back into the evolved software or scanned in so that we have the copy that has the recorded, basically the recorded stamp on them. Because they don't send them back for digital, they send them back through the mail. I would be in right. favor of giving Jen what she wants tonight. Yeah. Having her come back with what we talked about is how can we increase enforcement or what potential pathways are there, you know, in regards to the, the small percentage of people that are the problem. Because she's not the problem. No, no, no. It's, it's, and, I, and I don't want them guys or anybody that we ask questions about is why this is one. I don't want them to look at my work. Tell them they're not doing their job. Is how how can we make this more efficient with less people? Right. And uh, this is just a side note to that. Do we, do we want to even ask the board how they're feeling about this issue? Because mm -hmm. it's going to get said with the board. So on that note, I recommend to the DOT to remove the requirement for developing agreements after many use projects and only require them for a conditional use or dip funding. Okay. Second by so motion by Cronin, second by Gurn on the question. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So carried. No one, uh, no for Mr. Pinsmo. Can we, can we have this be scheduled come to the board? Because that, that needs to be looked at by the board, if not. Yeah, we can have this. I think that should come to us for specifically looking at the not conforming. Because if they're yeah. not going to support it. Yeah, right. And where are we even going? Down? I don't think yeah. we're asking for any of the other permits to go up. It's just a, it's just a hammer through. I just want the, the fees for the people who don't. Yeah, do what they say they're exactly. Doing. That's all. That's, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, staff reports items 11 and 12, June 2022. Well, July. Oh yeah. You so have. you have the correct things. You want me to look back next month? I can do that. So I did are they? Are the correct ones in the packet? Yeah, they are. It just didn't look like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, July 2023 staff approved survey, survey, certified survey maps and site plans in July 2023. What's your pleasure? Motion by Gary. Second. Second. We'll go we'll to Hoffman. He hasn't had anything else. Tonight. Second by Hoffman. On the question. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So, uh, 13 project updates. Uh, so I did put the report in for all the different projects. I don't know if there's anything specific that you want. Um, Roman did say today that tomorrow they're going to start staging for project demo. No? Yes. That's Next. Very interesting stuff going on out there. Um, part of it's being staged over at uh, Faber, and part of the construction fairs are staged on the site. I've seen that over the Faber. Yeah, so we we're out there you know, a couple of weeks ago now when they started started prepping the site. Out there. So did they have to get it? Did they have to get it in the or is that did, did, uh, did they do that? I'm not sure. I've got. I talked to Dan. Or Dan from. Uh, from the general contractor company today. So that's when we found out this afternoon that they were actually looking at staging over there. Otherwise, I had no idea what they were doing because they never bothered calling it. Well, so that's why I was wondering what the heck even happened. Was yeah. it part of Timberwolves? That's, so that's the, the general contractor is leasing this dirt area. Yep. So they can set their job trailers there so they can work on a Timberwolf project. 
So, um, must be under a under an acre of disturbance then. Then you don't need to analyze or yeah, don't want to measure it off, but that's it. So, um, um, the uh, 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 the uh, 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 so they didn't sign anything, but they are moving forward. Well, we just turn it back, so I'm not sure they were going to do it. Well, that's, I guess my question is, are we? I don't build. Are we, are I don't build. I don't build. The, the next one is any more. The building I mean, permits have been issued for the traffic. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. If you look at the permit fee total up oh, there yeah, for July, that, that shows the. Okay. Are, are they doing any sort of. They have been saying. He called me Amazon to do it. I talked to him on the phone. So. Yeah, they are. They have announced that they're going to use that. They haven't said anything. They haven't like, formally said anything. No groundbreaking standard. Yeah. 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 They do this yeah. stuff all over the place. Yeah. 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 Yeah
streets are devoted to that theme, and he is kind of a direct, almost a more public street. But Mike kind of might have thought on that, which is a great suggestion. In fact. No, I don't want it to be a public street. I know. Uh, I know you're worried about that, and I think that was a good thing to point out. But yeah, we also have some stormwater things maybe that have to be. There's some separation from the well site. Or well, you're, you're not opposed to so you're not opposed to putting it in. You just don't want to be responsible for maintaining it. I I I guess the way they initially showed it, it, it was a straight shot from Schofield out to Blade. Too straight. It was too straight. So I, 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 I got come that. into the site if it needs to, you know, wiggle a little to the east and then come down. Yeah. So it's like it's not what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, so it looks more like two driveways, not just a road for. People go through, and where they have a place that's going to be like, uh, from what I can tell, less than five feet from our well house building. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah, so there was, those are things that really weren't shown on the okay. plan. They needed to show the adjacent property that happened to lot. Yeah, and give us now that you mentioned the heart, and there's some stormwater pond issues with your well. That's good. Yeah, so you have 400 foot separation or 400 foot. Yeah, buffers. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for a kind of response on that. Um, there hasn't been any further contact from Lockray with Kristen. I know they were trying to find ways that you can bring Kristen to get some kind of uh, financial assistance. Um, in the initial proposal, which the board had entertained, it's already been offered. Or, uh, any initial proposal for assistance that was pitched to the board was uh, accepted and rejected. So um, there's been no nothing further that that would be the property at the uh, intersection of Cutoff Road and still feel that way. And other than that, there really hasn't been much activity. Um, focusing on other things like the village's property and trying to get that. Uh, Marketed as it is being marketed right now. Uh, we'll be having some discussion about that at the board meeting next Monday as well. Okay. Anything else on topic updates? Um, okay, on 14, announcement from Commissioner Remarks and staff and staff of bills. Travis? I know. Okay. No. Um, I do for staff referrals. You're limited to two items. I'm just kidding. One <laughs> item is the staff hanging around with Mark. <laughs> um, I just have one, and it's on on uh, our storage facilities. So we kind of talked earlier. Um, can we take a look at that at a future meeting about planes, trains, campers, boats, automobiles? What can be stored outside of a building? And what is permitted was not why actually Jim, I think we need to take it through further step. And I think we need to find out what's being stored inside of them as well. Because when total rental was built, I have a I guess I'm a stereotype and say there's probably more household things. And now we're storing more campers, propane, boats, gasoline, things like that. When I built my building, I had two first aid recommendations because I used the word storage. Um, I had to put a exhaust in there that exhausted all with the air, I believe it's up there, you know, three times a day. It had to circulate there in the building because I had boats, trains, automobiles, planes, helicopters in that building. So, I mean, that's something that should be looked at in a, in a that caused the state level in the community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how you submit it in and how you tag it. So, but I mean, with these uh, specifically maxi storage units, we all know what's going on there. It's boats or campers of sorts. I mean, they can be regulated, put the same type of their makeup in those units to exhaust the fumes out of there. So, that one by the estate, though? I don't think it's the estate. It like Gary said, it depends on how they submit it. Yeah, they're they're really, really, in all, in, all, in all honesty, it's really what's whoever just did the design. Um, you have to have that conversation with them how it's tagged when it's made correct. So for yours, that would be a secondary use on the site. 
So depending on, unless you change the personal, because right now it says no, there's nothing, none of that stuff out there. So unless you do a code change that either uh, takes that requirement off of there or changes it in some way, um, it's not allowed that way right now. It would fall under either, because I looked at it today, either the outside storage or um, the, the trend, there's a transportation or whatever it's called. Are we talking um, residential side? Or? No, no, for, for the window storage so. units. If you want to park your camper at storage unit not in the building, you can't do it. Yeah, you're right. You can't. Can't well, there's usually there. not enough room for them. I understand that, but well, there's, a, like, there's a lot of communities though, and I also it's a different use that they when have. when you see their site plans for uh, tracky, tracky tracky does a ton of these things. They'll usually put a bunch of sections that are you know in storage. Then they'll have a bunch of parking stalls that are for exterior storage. That are motorhomes, right. slash uh, campers, whatever you may want to store outside boats uh, that are wrapped up or certain, you know, I'll call it spill wrap, but uh, vacuum sealed. They'll have those in there and then they'll stage their back section again with more of their kind of boats or whatever. Right. And right now, the way the code right now is not allowed. So that would be a code unit. Good. Or it would fall under a different use. Yeah. And I would and assume that what, 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 what they have similar on theirs is. Where they would, if anything is exposed, they burn the you know, trees up. Yeah, or there's usually spring, spring yes. spring yeah. different spring in the Yeah, that would be the, that's probably why, we, you know, if you if you follow now, if you say, if you come in here, the requirement on that, if I had enough square footage and I showed that on my site plan, and I, I said, Jen, I, I would like to have outside storage, you would say, well, then you have to have a shoot with that. Well, you'd have to follow whatever. Right. Yeah, because I, I believe um, if you have a fence, then you don't have to worry about what's inside the fence. Right? A lot of times, that's how it is. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. If this was a specific use when they created the uh -huh. personal storage facilities, uh -huh. that so when we originally did the zoning code, a lot of things were put to conditional use. That was prior to the state law changing on conditional use because. They were okay with it in certain areas. You didn't want them like where Alpine is, so like yeah. Kirk, Kozowski's, the yeah. house that's right next to when you come into the village. I mean, if you make some changes to that, that's why they're not allowed in the B2 at all. They're allowed in B3 and then LI for GI because you typically want those. Or I think they, there's some, they might be allowed out in the rural on the bag or something like that too, typically. So it's usually where we buy those away from. But you are seeing them now where, where a lot of the bigger developments that are have put. Some of them are putting them in next to subdivisions, like off of subdivisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they'll have they'll have they'll have exterior storage combined with uh, you know inside storage. They'll they'll mix them in the middle where some of the buildings are surrounded that you can't see, but they right. still have that exterior yeah. storage because people do want some some of their stuff stored outside. Right? But when this original one was set up and it didn't standard. Up. They didn't want them because the ones they had were the ones they had, and they really didn't want them. And the last thing you want is completely all outside storage because you don't want to well, see that. This is so you guys saw two, right? And you had the one on Ryan Street, there's another one coming down by down on Jay that someone purchased too. So, I mean, four of them in, in a year, mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, so well, there's a lot of money in standing. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, but there's also not a lot of, I mean, depending on where they're at, there's better uses for property. So that's where the plan fishing and the board has to make decisions. I can't believe, I, I never was, I can't believe I saw one thing, I kind of wondered for that. For, well, I thought that was going to be something mm -hmm. else, because originally the crowd had talked about that being some, something else. The crowd sells the one though? Yeah. Were they, were they waiting for this to do? No, no that, that was the one here and crowd was in the back. Right. right. That was under crowd's name for the zoning. Yeah. And they won't buy it. I'm, I'm just presuming the owner is not going to buy it unless his only got through this got approved. Correct. Right. That's what I would agree. Kraut was, today was his last extension on, on it. Like he, it, they needed to get this done. <coughs> he was going to go with a different project. Okay. Or get a full time. 
Yeah. Their goal is to build like 25,000 square feet under roof this year. I can tell you what All right. Um, anything else from staff? Roman, that is something. All right, uh, next regular next regular meeting date, Monday, September 11th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Uh, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Please. Second. Motion by Beeson, second by Adrian. On the question, bearing on all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.